Let's talk about the measurement of water by the Carl Fisher method. So first of all, water in oil is generally not a good thing. It results in reduced film strength, hydrolysis and acid formation, as well as additive depletion. So in general, we don't like it, and we would like a measure of how much water is in the oil so that we can track some of these bad effects. So how could we do that? Well, the first way, which would be kind of a quick and dirty way, is just to heat the sample, right? If we were to heat it up, we can take advantage of the fact that water and oil have different boiling points. And as the water boils off, we could measure the mass loss and we could get an idea for how much water is in the sample. The only problem with that is, of course, that oil is not a single substance. There are light molecules and heavy molecules, and these lighter molecules will are likely to kind of volatilize off with the water sample. Right? So what we'd actually get is a reduction in the oil volume as well. So it wouldn't be very accurate. Maybe as a, as a field test, as a quick and dirty method, it's okay. But if we want something with a, a certain degree of accuracy, this isn't going to cut it. So what we want is something that can measure sp very specific quantities of water. Unfortunately, we have a reaction that can help us. So if I have sulfur dioxide, water, and iodine, what they react to make is a sulfur trioxide as well as a hydrogen iodide. Now, why is this helpful? Well, if you'll notice that in this reaction, there are equal amounts of water and iodine, right? So for every one molecule of iodine I add into the solution, it's going to react with one molecule of water. And so I can keep doing this. I can keep adding iodine and it will react with one molecule of water. And eventually what I'm gonna get is iodine in the products. What that means is that I have consumed all the water in the solution. So now I can take how much iodine did I add to this process, and that will give me a measure of how much water was in the solution to begin with. So we're going to take advantage of this reaction. Now, there's two main methods of doing this. There's volumetric and coulometric. Um, the methods kind of start off the same in that we have electrodes which are going to measure the voltage potential and we have a stirrer that's going to make the make sure that the solution is all mixed together where it gets different right is that the equipment is slightly different so what we have in the coulometric side is a sample that's mixed with analyte right and an analyte is a solution that is a combination of some alcohol some sulfur dioxide and some potassium iodide Right, so that's an important one to know. Then after that, we've got the electrodes. We have an anode, a cathode. So we're sort of setting up a battery cell here and then what we call a catholite. Now, the reason why this is a little bit different, okay, is because remember we talked about this reaction, sulfur dioxide, water, and iodine. Well, in the sample plus analyte solution, we don't actually have iodine. What we have is potassium iodide, right? And in this solution, the iodine exists as ions. Now, what they are going to do is that they are going to migrate over to the battery cell, right? Because we have an anode and a cathode. When they get to the positively charged cathode, because they're negatively charged, they're going to be attracted to the positive charge, right? Within that analyte. And what they are then going to do is they're going to give up the electrons, right? And form iodine. The iodine will then react with the water. Now, this um, process is eventually going to stop and we can tell that the process has stopped because the electrons will stop um, going through the circuit. And that's the way that we can get a measure for how much water was in the sample in the first place. The volumetric method is a little bit more simple. Instead, we just kind of add the, the iodine in solution, right? And that's how we get um, and, and when we see the, the voltage change quite substantially, that's an indication that there is excess iodine in the solution. So slightly different methods. Now, the reason why we have two different methods is because they have varying degrees of accuracy. Coulometric is really appropriate for solutions with less than 2% water, and volumetric is good for solutions with above 2% water. That's where they tend to be most accurate. All right, so Carl Fisher water, first of all, so only a small sample is very required. So that's an advantage of this system. Additives can interfere with it though, right? So we talked about a, a reaction of sulfur dioxide with water and iodine. Well, sometimes the additives can actually react inside that reaction, right? So that's where we get some inaccuracy. But despite that, it's generally accurate to within about 1%. So as an example, if we measured 3% water, 
the tolerance on that, we're saying it's between 2.97 and 3.03%. And the effective range is about 10 parts per million right up to 100% water. So it's, it's a very effective method for measuring um, very small and very large quantities of water.